Are you always horny? Is self-pleasure really safe? Let's dig into the science and thoughts behind it. Many say that self-pleasure is perfectly normal, but how much is too much? At what point does it turn into an obsession? What happens if you find it hard to stop? We'll tackle these questions and consider why this seemingly safe behavior might catch you off guard in unexpected ways. Sorry for the eye-catching headline. I just wanted to grab your focus on this important matter that impacts many youths and adults, sapping their energy. In this video, we'll uncover how our brain reacts to this activity from both a scientific and philosophical standpoint and see what lessons Stoicism has to offer about this habit. Let's begin by exploring a bit of history. Today, medical experts agree that masturbation is a normal behavior, not just in humans, but also in other animals like dogs. However, this perspective hasn't always been widely accepted. In earlier times, it was often viewed as morally wrong, particularly for men, because it was seen as unproductive and pointless. For women, the belief was that masturbation might make them less dependent on men by allowing them to experience pleasure independently. In addition to these moral concerns, there were also fears about physical health. It was commonly thought that masturbation could lead to illnesses, which made it strongly discouraged. But let's fast forward to the present. What do we actually understand about masturbation today, especially for men who suffer from insomnia? It is known that masturbation can help induce sleep because according to a complex study by a French Institute of Medical Research and Health, the male brain turns off sexual desire after achieving orgasm. The cerebral cortex, which controls conscious thinking, enters a state of rest after climax, which not only stops any further sexual desire, but also helps to promote sleep. So, where's the problem? Within one of its benefits lies a potential pitfall. If you're a regular viewer of this channel, you might already be aware of this. Masturbation triggers the release of dopamine in the brain, a hormone that creates feelings of pleasure, reduces stress, and gives a sense of reward. This feeling of enjoyment can be so strong that it leads some people to develop an addiction. The Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders identifies hypersexuality disorder, frequently marked by excessive masturbation, as a type of obsessive-compulsive disorder. This condition can cause extreme psychological distress and interfere with familial relationships. When you get addicted, Controlling your actions becomes tough, and you may fall prey to your own inability to discipline yourself. This situation might make you repeatedly indulge in actions like visiting prostitutes, having sex with many partners, or watching too much pornography. Your brain, flooded with dopamine, always seeks to find happiness. The addiction to masturbation originates from the chemicals released in your brain. As your brain gets used to the dopamine surge, it starts demanding more to feel the same joy, creating a relentless cycle where you're always looking for the next thrill. Over time, your brain might even start blocking dopamine receptors to save itself from excessive stimulation. Consequently, you may find yourself masturbating without much pleasure, which can be frustrating and push you even harder to pursue that elusive thrill. Now you might wonder how Stoicism fits into this. Stoic philosophers like Cicero, Marcus Aurelius and Epictetus, who were experts in self-control and wisdom, had thoughtful views on pleasure and desire. For the Stoics, masturbation wasn't just about physical pleasure. It was a chance to test the body and mind's limits. They saw it as a way to gain self-knowledge and a path to true freedom. Epicurus claimed that it's not the chase for pleasure, but self-restraint that marks a virtuous person. 
overcoming worldly desires and pleasures was seen as a victory that lifted the human spirit. Rather than being controlled by our desires, we should aim to control them. The Stoics teach us that real happiness is found in mastering ourselves and enjoying things that are straightforward and good. They guide us in managing our intense feelings by looking within and adjusting our reactions. When we face our emotions deliberately, we can handle them in a beneficial way. Let me tell you about someone I know. This person had a habit of compulsive masturbation, which gave them temporary comfort, but left them feeling troubled afterward. By studying Stoic philosophies and practicing discipline, they transformed significantly. They learned to face their urges with awareness and discovered genuine happiness and self-discipline. Now, they live a peaceful life, no longer bound by fleeting desires. I know someone who faced a severe challenge with compulsive masturbation. For them, it was more than just a physical activity. It was a way to escape life's pressures and stress. Whenever they felt overwhelmed, anxious or simply bored, they resorted to this habit for quick relief. The immediate pleasure was real, but it never lasted. Soon after, they would feel guilty, ashamed and full of regret, trapped in an emotional turmoil that felt overwhelming. This pattern kept repeating itself. Each time, they would succumb to their cravings, enjoy a moment of pleasure, but then feel empty and disgusted with themselves afterward. This created a vicious cycle, continuously reinforcing their feelings of worthlessness and helplessness. They knew their actions were harmful and unsustainable, yet they felt incapable of stopping. The feeling of being overwhelmed by their own desires was debilitating, impacting their mental and emotional health significantly. In their search for a solution, they turned to various philosophies and practices that might help them take back control of their life. It was during this search that they came across Stoicism, a school of thought from ancient philosophers who valued self-discipline, control, and living in tune with nature. Curious, they dove into the works of Cicero, Marcus Aurelius, and Epictetus. Initially, the concepts of Stoicism were straightforward, but applying them in daily life, especially against strong habitual desires, proved to be tough. Over time, through persistent effort, they began to notice changes in their thinking. They realized that true liberation didn't lie in giving in to every whim, but in overcoming those whims. The Stoic teachings helped them see that they could choose how they acted, and they didn't need to be ruled by their impulses. They tackled their desires directly, not by avoiding or dreading them, but by understanding their origins and what they really needed at the moment. They engaged in mindfulness and introspection, questioning why they sought pleasure in harmful ways and what they hoped to gain from it. In this journey, they discovered that the true joy they were searching for wasn't found in short-lived joys, but in living a life that reflects their true values and purpose. As they practiced more self-discipline and embraced the teachings of Stoicism, something amazing occurred. The desires that once felt overpowering started to weaken. The emotional upheaval that used to arise after each indulgence began to diminish. They no longer felt the intense need to seek temporary satisfaction because they had found a deeper, enduring peace within themselves. Now, this person enjoys a life of inner tranquility, free from the urges that once controlled their life. They have mastered their desires and, more importantly, their mind. By choosing to live by their deepest beliefs and values, they have found a deep happiness that is much more rewarding than any brief pleasure. Their path was not easy, but it serves as proof of the strength of self-discipline and the life-changing impact of philosophical insight. It serves as a reminder that we all have the power to transform our lives, 
to free ourselves from the grip of our desires and to experience genuine fulfillment by living truthfully and with intention. Consider the energy we spend on habits like masturbation. Every habit consumes a bit of our mental and physical energy, energy that could be used for other, more productive activities. For instance, imagine if instead of giving in to a quick moment of pleasure, you channeled that energy into a hobby, learning a new skill, or just going for a walk. Over time, these healthier habits can lead to betterments in both our mental and physical well-being. Moreover, let's talk about confidence. It's not just about feeling good in the moment, it's about building a sense of self-worth that lasts. By mastering our desires, we can develop a deeper confidence that comes from knowing we are in control of our actions, not the other way around. This kind of confidence is attractive. It draws people to you, whether in friendships or romantic relationships, because it shows that you are a person of strong character and discipline. Lastly, I want to emphasize the importance of setting goals. When we focus on something bigger than our immediate desires, we give ourselves a powerful reason to resist temptations and push forward. Whether it's a career ambition, a fitness goal, or a personal project, having clear goals can help steer our focus away from short-term gratifications and towards long-lasting achievements. By embracing these principles, not only can we break free from habits that may hold us back, but we also open up a world of opportunities for personal growth and fulfillment. Remember, every day is a new chance to make choices that reflect who we truly want to be. So, ask yourself, what kind of life do you want to lead? What kind of person do you want to become? Take control, set your sights on your goals, and start taking steps towards them today. What's happening in your life? Do you really think sitting around, watching videos, and just entertaining yourself is going to make you confident and successful? Do you believe spending your time and energy on these things will help you find a partner? It won't. Please think carefully. In the comments below, I'd like you to write I will turn my life around and take back control. I want you to practice this as well, not just write it and forget about it. Thanks for watching this video. I wish you all the best. See you in the next video. Until next time.